All right, welcome back. This is our Law and Order segment for Show 129, recorded uh, Friday, October 14th, 2016. Yes, it is still Friday by my clock here. So, in Law and Order, we've got thousands of men to be pardoned for gay sex, which was once a crime in Britain. So, if we uh, if we look back back in time, doodly, 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 um. <clears throat> The men were convicted, tens of thousands of them, of crimes like, <laughs> I love this word, I really do, buggery, gross <laughs> indecency, and loitering with intent. <laughs> I love the British, I really do, even when they're being horrible. Um, <laughs> they had been arrested in bars, coffee houses, and public bathrooms, and sometimes in the privacy of their homes and with their partners. In many cases, their only offense was seeking intimacy with another man. Decades after homosexuality was decriminalized in Britain, the government announced on Thursday that it would posthumously pardon thousands of gay and bisexual men who were convicted, in essence, of having or seeking gay sex. Since 2012, men in such uh, con men with such convictions who are still alive have been able to apply to have their names cleared. So this this is just a though it is a posthumous thing and it is law. A bad law. <laughs> so finally, people getting uh, getting exonerated. Uh, it, it, it's really meaningful, especially I, I in would, today's age. I like to point out a funny thing is though, mm -hmm. and yeah, doing research for a steampunk game, and I think JP parks for this as well. Mm -hmm. In Victorian England, there were actually men's clubs, which were specifically for crossdressers and gay men. Well, you know, when in Rome. <laughs> And yet, then comes World War II era, and suddenly problems. Yeah, well, but Victorian era, it was a okay as long as it was behind that door. Yeah, I mean that that's no. that's pretty much the case about the Victorian era in general. Was you know that's fine for if you for pretty much anything as long as it happens behind closed doors, a okay. Yeah, as long as you try to do some kind of moniker of keeping it quiet mm -hmm. yeah, it's perfectly fine as long as you didn't flaunt it yeah yeah consensual sex between men over the age of 21 was decriminalized in england and wales in 1967 in scotland 1980 and in northern ireland in 1982 the age of consent for homosexual sex was lowered to 16 the same for heterosexual sex in 2001 Lesbian sex was not specifically outlawed in Britain, although lesbians were occasionally prosecuted under vice statutes. The pardon applies only to men. Man. Still. <laughs> still. There's misogyny even in this. That's crazy. <laughs> Wait, really, England? Really? Come on. You don't have to be be a man to be gay. Boy, there's a sound drop. I'm gonna gonna regret later. <laughs> <laughs> well, I what I was <laughs> formulating thoughts. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh. I, I. This is one of those areas. Just because we're being very specific about the UK laws, mm -hmm. that I'm not sure I'm educated enough on them to speak. Um, you did say that there you, were... You, you cannot speak intelligently on buggery, gross indecency, and loitering with intent. I'm not sure anyone can, <laughs> but... No, 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 hold on. The first two, maybe not, but I'm almost 100% certain everyone can speak intelligently on loitering with intent. If you haven't done that at some point in your life, you've spent your entire life sitting on a goddamn couch. It's literally standing around wanting to do something. <laughs> Though That is what words mean, yeah. That's great, though. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, th this was a serious thing. Thankfully, it's gone now, so now I guess I can joke about it. Uh, at least I don't feel bad about joking about it. So, loitering with intent. Uh, of course, this is... <laughs> that's going to get me every time. Um, of course, we, we've got uh, Alan Turing, the father of modern computing, uh, mathematician, mm -hmm. you know, broke the uh, the Enigma coding machine. Oh, look, we're talking about Nazis again. <laughs> <laughs> but at least there's a whole nother topic. So you're, it's a whole yeah. It's defeating the Nazis. You're going to segue from Nazis into a whole nother thing. I so. will. I will. Yes. In fact, I'm going to do that now. 
bugger this. Moving along. <laughs> okay, so <clears throat> the feds claim that they can enter a house. Now, we're back in, in the good old U.S. of A here. Mm -hmm. um, so the federal government claims that they can enter a house and demand that your fingerprints to unlock your phones. So it's a, it's a biometric thing, and I think I've I made mention of this. Um, I was doing I broke I broke my phone, my Nexus Six P. I I broke it terribly, and had to go through and try a repair. The repair did not work, by the way. Uh, <laughs> so I uh, I ended up with a a very broken screen and uh, and miscellaneous parts, and had to buy a new phone. But while I was going through and doing the the tear down and then the subsequent unboxing of the new phone i kind of walked through you know some of the features and it has a very excellent fingerprint reader on it um very similar to how the iphone does as well now so with that you can be compelled to use one of your body parts <laughs> because well they can just force your hand literally they can force your hand onto it and make it happen they cannot force something out of your head, though. Mm -hmm. So I, I mostly just wanted to put this in here to say, oh, look, no, no, it's real. I'm not crazy. <laughs> they are actually able to do this. Uh, under the Fourth Amendment, Americans are protected from unreasonable search and seizure. But according to one group of federal prosecutors, just being in the wrong house at the wrong time is cause enough to make every single person inside provide their fingerprints and unlock their phones. Back in 2014, a Virginia circuit court ruled that while suspects cannot be forced to provide phone passcodes, biometric data like fingerprints doesn't have the same constitutional protection. Since then, multiple law enforcement agencies have tried to force individual suspects to unlock their phones with their fingerprints, but none have claimed the sweeping authority found in a Justice Department memorandum recently uncovered by Forbes. <clears throat> In the court document filed earlier this year, federal prosecutors in California argued that a warrant for a mass finger, <clears throat> mass finger <laughs> unlocking, was constitutionally sound, even though the government doesn't know ahead of time the identity of every digital device or every fingerprint, or indeed every other piece of evidence that it will find in the search. That was all a quote, by the way. So that's directly from the document. Because, quoting again, it has demonstrated probable cause that evidence may exist at the search location. Criminal defense lawyer uh, Marina Med Medvin, however, disagreed. Thank you. We also disagree. Quote, they want the ability to get a warrant on the assumption that they will learn more after they have a warrant. Mm -hmm. um, this would be an unbelievably audacious abuse of power if it were permitted. And why wouldn't they try? You know, it gives them plenty of ammunition. And what guy that has a gun doesn't want more ammunition? So, unfortunately, other documents related to the case were not publicly available. It is unclear if the search was actually executed. Even so, Medvin believes the memorandum sets a deeply troubling precedent using older case law regarding the collection of fingerprint evidence to request complete access to the, quote, amazing amount of information, end quote, found on a cell phone. Quote, if you, <laughs> you need to have a reasonable basis before you begin the search. That reasonable basis is what allows you to search in the first place, said Medvin. It is the kind of thing, uh, this, if this kind of thing became law, then there would be nothing to prevent a search of every phone at a certain location. In the meantime, it might be a good idea to switch to uh, a numerical code because they cannot force you to give that up. So, <clears throat> something to know about encrypted phones and devices, uh, such as the the iPhone does it, uh, all flavors that have the fingerprint reader because they all use the same iOS software. And at least um, Android phones that have a passcode enabled and require it on boot up. The fingerprint will not work if the, the phone was powered off first. So as soon as it boots back up, it wants the passcode. Okay? So here's your tip, folks. 
if you feel like you're about to get rousted by the police, instead of filming them, turn your phone all the way off. Especially if you use your fingerprints to open your phone. However, if you don't use your fingerprints to open your phone, and you just use a passcode, and please make it longer than four characters if you can, (laughs) then then you're fine. Go ahead and film them. Just make sure to lock it before you hand it to them. Because they will ask. <laughs> so, there's your, uh, there's your tips. Enjoy. <laughs> you guys have anything, uh, any comments on that one? No, I think you pretty much covered it. I just added something um, in there. In 2015, mm-hmm. they actually had two Supreme Court cases regarding phones and um, searchings. Okay. Um, you know, and, and basically it's one of those things where... Like you said, what they're trying to use is a, a broad scale warrant to compel people to put their finger on the phone. Um, but you mm-hmm. get into those sticky situations of if the warrant is for me to put my finger on the phone and that's it, because that's all you can compel. You can't you would have to tie that warrant specifically to put the finger on the phone to search it incident to arrest. And what you get in this Supreme Court case that happened was basically a single opinion that decided both cases um, written by Chief Justice Roberts, the court held unanimously that our answer to the question of what police must do before searching a cell phone sees incident to an arrest is simple, get a warrant. So they're very targeted and the, the warrant has to be specifically to search the phone incident to arrest. So you can't have it be broad based. Hey, we're going to this place. We think something may happen. We want to search these phones. Yeah, it has to be incident to arrest. So, so what they're looking for here, I'd be very interested to see climb up through the courts, because if they do it, it's going to happen. And it's almost something the Supreme Court has to take because it will be something that builds upon previous case law that they've already established. And, you know, it, it's just one of those things where, like, you can you can try and find ways around whatever you want. Yeah. But it literally took me. 10 seconds to find that there's already precedent against what you're trying to do. You know, like the arresting officers can pretty much inspect a phone, make sure it doesn't have any hidden object that can be used to inflict harm, like a Mm -hmm. a razor blade or something small like that. Yeah. But once that's done, you know, they can't really do anything outside of that, that, that even, you know, something that, that you might consider threat to the safety of the officers, such as like a text saying, yo, we'll be there to help you guys out with those cops in a minute is still too slight to really justify going through a phone just because. So if the police raided your house right now looking for you, even under this ideal of they have a warrant to look at phones, I, I mean, I would fight them tooth and nail on that. Now, granted, I don't use a fingerprint, but I have this information ahead of time. Yeah. So. And that's the important thing is that people have that information because, you know, not only is this not granted, you can find it very quickly. Like you just did, yeah. but if you don't have it ahead of time, and if you're in a situation where, you know, most people I know, regardless of whether or not they've done anything wrong, get nervous around cops, regardless, Yeah. you know, when you are nervous and, um, and when the method of looking up that information would involve you turning on your phone, for instance, and trying to look up what they can and can't do while you've got a police officer yelling at you mm. or, you know, I- intimidating you. Um, I mean, it, and it's if you, definitely... And if they ask you for your phone or something like mm-hmm. that and you say no, then suddenly you're resisting arrest and you might get killed. Yeah, ex- exactly. And um, that's why it is so important to have this information ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Not that this is going to necessarily help you. It will help you after the fact because unreasonable search and seizure and collecting evidence when they weren't allowed to collect the evidence means the evidence mm-hmm. gets thrown out of court. Yes. Because you I believe you, that's you, called fruit of the poison tree, isn't it? I like it. I don't know. Maybe. Yeah. Sure. We'll go with that. Um, I don't. I don't know that uh, that particular phrase. Uh, but I do like it. So with um, fruit of the poison tree is a legal metaphor in the oh. United States used to describe evidence that is obtained <clears throat> illegally. My Google foo is still strong and fast. See, and I was fast. pretty sure I remembered nice. that. I, I had actually good, never good. heard that term before, but it makes sense. I like it. I like yes, it. Yes, I went to college for uh, crime scene investigations. 
Nice. And I remember that was one of the things that we had talked about was when you could obtain evidence and, and when you couldn't. And mm -hmm. um, I mean, everybody's, when I say everybody, I mean, most of America is so worried about the degradation of the Second Amendment. I am worried about the degradation of the Fourth, to be honest with you. I'm kind of worried about the degradation of all the amendments, <laughs> you know, at this point. Um, and when we've got, you know, <laughs> tune in back to episode one there. Uh, and yeah, we'll, um, uh, the demagogues are coming. The demagogues are coming. Um, so with this, uh, though you may know all of this, we are currently in a state of mm, near panic when it comes to law enforcement. Uh, the panic is on both sides of the fence. Okay, whether or not you're in riot gear or you're the one that, that is, you know, uh, loitering with intent. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, depending on, on which side of the fence you're, you're falling it's on. It's going to be a tagline for the It show. is, O'Reilly yeah. Radio, loitering I, I, with I, intent. I think that's the name for the show. That, well, that's, the that's, the, that's the name of this particular segment, loitering with intent. Because um, I can't help it. The the thing is with, with these, the police officer may not know this law, and they don't want to be told they're wrong. Mm -hmm. So even if they are wrong, uh, in this case, it's probably better just, you know, if you want to, it's all up to you. I'm not going to tell you how to live your life. But if you can, protect yourself. The less data they have, uh, possibly the better your life is going to go. So just turn the phone off entirely uh, if they're smart about collecting data they would take your phone and they would put it in a Faraday bag so that it cannot be communicated with inside or outside so that way no remote wipes could happen um, or any additional tracking information could happen now the the trick there is that then the phone, by its very nature, is going to be pinging like mad to try and get a signal and it's going to wear down its battery fast, so fast. So they have a limited amount of time. If they really, really suspect something, they have a limited amount of time, uh, depending on your phone, how fast they can get that back to a lab. They may have to like use liquid nitrogen and pull, pull it apart and all sorts of things. And that's not so easy, especially if you've done an iFixit teardown recently, like I have. That's not an easy prospect for them to do they would have to plug it in and, and get the data. So if you already have your device encrypted, and please just go ahead and do it, why not? Encrypt all the things. Uh, then you're making it that much more difficult. And once that battery runs out, hopefully it's doing it in the Faraday ba bag, then they would have to compel you to try and turn it on and give, give the code instead of your fingerprints. So there you go. Just a little, a little more words of advice. Uh, take that however you wish. Uh, perhaps, you know, put it into your next novel about how they've how they've done things. Um, you could always do that. So, <clears throat> all of that is available in our show notes, available at oreallyradio.com, and you can find them right there for show one twenty nine C. Uh, 